single malt with that kind of history and heritage. And that's what makes Bushmills not only different from other distilleries in Ireland and Scotland, but really something that's truly special and rare. Tasting whiskey from the barrel in the warehouse <laughs> with the blender. I mean, it's... I mean, no this complaints is, about know. this right now. Nope. <laughs> There's 400 years of knowledge being handed down from master distiller to master distiller. Trial and effort and different nuances and different cast types and different distillation practices that really brought to us uh, where we are today with what is really Bushmills. There is a great science to it, especially in the distillation. We rely on the water. The water comes from a tributary of the river bush called St. Columns Rill. And it's the river bush that provides all the crystal clear, wonderful water. It's the same water that flows across the Giant's Causeway. We use the finest malted barley and we use beautiful copper pot stills and we triple distill and that creates a, a truly spectacular spirit. It's crazy to me that all 10 of those stills are being run from this one control room. <laughs> I'm watching like three stills back here and one over there. Yeah. That's an amazing amount of control. A hundred years ago, that would have been a lot more labor intensive to do all of this, right? I mean, yeah, so the same principles of like, we'd yeah. have had the same stills, we would have had more people running. I like to look around here and we have this great contrast. We have the great traditional way of making whiskey still, but we have the modern control. Yeah. But uh, fundamentally, it's all about the taste and the taste hasn't changed all those years. This is what Bushmans does day in, day out, week in, week out, century after century. That's what we're good at. Column produces this, this beautiful crystal clear spirit and that spirit has all the richness and maltiness that is Bushmills. Once we get into maturation it really turns more into an art. And you are the first female master blender in Bushmills history? In Bushmills history and indeed the history of Irish whiskey. That's, wow. that's amazing. That's awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> My role is to select the casks, to mature it in and to turn it into whiskey. This is where Helen lives, this is Helen's domain, so this is where we look to start to blend and to actually use different types of barrels. Uh, we mix them together uh, to form our single malts or to form our blended whiskies. When Helen wants a barrel from up there, it has to come from up there. And it's always <laughs> up there. <laughs> There's a very special relationship um, with the casks. They're, they're living, breathing, beautiful things. The pride that is in the distillery is that it doesn't really matter how much effort it takes. It has to be that perfect one. We're never in any hurry. We will wait till it's perfect. We have a whiskey for every palate here. What's the whiskey for your palate? Oh, 10 year old. <laughs> you have all of these drinkers, and I'm sorry to say bartenders too, who are so militant about how you can and how yeah. you certainly cannot drink whiskey. Yeah. You'll always have purists that are like, how dare you? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, an 18 year old single malt makes a really good old fashioned. I personally think that people should drink whiskey the way they want to drink whiskey. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere along the line, the conversation flipped from these are the rules to, no, drink it however you want, and that's finally starting to get across, and that's I just think just allowing people to explore more than they used to. Without Bushmills, this idea of, of making single malt would have disappeared. It was Bushmills that kept single malt Irish whiskey alive for decades. That's why Bushmills is the largest producer of Irish single malt whiskey today, and why it's so well regarded for producing single malt whiskey. Bushmills feels like it has been here forever. I think we are coming to a point where we're learning to cherish and honor things that have been done a certain way for a very long time, things that have their roots in decades and centuries ago. From the moment you walk through the gates, you see the whitewashed buildings, you do fall in love with it. All around you is a reminder of the craft that goes into making good whiskey. Everything we do is for people to enjoy the finest whiskey in Ireland. I think one of the great things about whiskey is there's always something new to learn. That's what keeps me coming back to the glass and the opportunity to be here at Bushmills and to learn about something that in the back of my head I thought I knew, uh, but turn into something completely unexpected is 
honestly the reason like I keep doing what I do. It's an opportunity to talk with people, to learn, and to ultimately share. And to me, that's what whiskey is. Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. Oh boy, am I, I'm going to tap into every ounce of Dan Dunn tonight. Dan Dunn, I'm going full Irish on you. I won't do that. I thought about doing it. I thought about doing this whole thing with an Irish brogue, but then I realized I have a really lousy Irish brogue. Uh, but we are drinking Irish whiskey this evening hence you know the theme i was going for there uh it's very exciting we're, we're gonna be drinking the flaviar's Bushmills rare cask series we've got six different whiskeys to get to i'm not gonna list them all right now but i'll just say this they're rare and they're aged in casks hence the name and i'm going to be drinking said whiskeys my old pal is a, a fantastic writer and uh expert on all things adult beverage name's brad jaffe he's gonna be joining us in just a little bit also joining us to make sure that we get all the bush mills irish whiskey information correct is their u.s national brand ambassador jack ferris jack knows a thing or two about this whiskey so he's gonna tell us i don't know much of anything i do know this i have a podcast and as always i invite you guys to check it out it's called what we're drinking with dan dunn it's available wherever podcast stream recent guest jason aldean country superstar pitbull mr worldwide christy brinkley's coming up got justin silver and christina hutchinson on tomorrow's show it's it's just it's it's fun the whole family that's over 21 fun for the whole family over 21 disclaimer there as always, we have uh, questions, comments. Or you might have questions, comments, suggestions. There, you put them in the comment box. Send them our way. We will try to field as many of those do- throughout the course of the show. You're also going to use that comments box for the prize giveaway. Yes, that's right. I said it. Prize giveaway. We do a prize giveaway every week here on the Nightcap Live. We got two prizes this week. Per usual, the first one is a Flaviar membership. Flaviar, of course, is the reason we're here. They're the sponsor of this thing. And it is also a, a club for fine spirits. Uh, what's the word? I'm like? Enthusiasts, that's it. It brings together people who want to discover new whiskeys and rums and vodkas and mezcals and whatever spirit you're into. Mama wanna. I don't think we have Mama wanna yet, but we'll get it. You want it. We got to do a sign up and then we'll do whatever you want. Uh, every quarter, Flaviar sends you samples. They send you, uh, they give you access to exclusive, highly allocated bottles you won't find anywhere else, and they're keeping you educated and entertained. It's a great way to bond over spirits with your friends and family. So you have a chance to win a membership tonight. But even if you don't win the membership, I do encourage you to check it out. Go to Flaviar's website and check it out, and maybe you'll want to join up and, and be one of us. So. That's prize number one. Prize number two, I forget. No, it's a bottle of, I believe, Bushmill's 16-year-old. Is that correct? Uh, there's no there's no one in my ear, by the way. I don't even, <laughs> I'm just pretending. Uh, yeah, it's correct. Now, I said it. Now that's what we're giving away. Even if it wasn't a b- six, you hear that, Jack Ferris? Find a bottle of 16-year-old, because I just announced that that's what we're giving away. Uh, and, and here's how you're going to win. Tonight is so simple. A simple way. Halloween is fast approaching. We know this. It's next week or something. And uh, I don't have a costume yet. I don't have a costume for Halloween. So I'm going to ask you, oh, wise and clever viewers, to suggest for me a Halloween costume. And the two best suggestions, as judged by myself 
and Brad and Jack at the end of this program. We will we will pick two winners out of all those suggestions, and they got to be clever. They could be funny. They could be sad. They could be frightening. Ooh, it's Halloween. But we're going to just pick two of those. One's going to win the Flaviar membership, and one's going to win the bottle of the Bushmills 16-year-old. Are you up to the cha- uh, to the challenge? Are you up to it? We'll see about that. By the way, this is the longest I've ever gone into an episode of the Nightcap Live without having a drink. So five, four, five minutes. Mark that down. All right. Speaking of drinking, uh, there's a man going to join us first. The first guest that we're having. Oh, boy, does he. He's a spirits writer. He's a whiskey expert. He specializes in food, beverage, travel. He's a beer and spirits consultant. He he's just every I mean, in 2019 he was he I think he wrote 7,000 articles between 2019 20. That's he's prolific and never stops. It's Forbes, it's USA Today, it's uh, Cat Fancy, all those publications. He's in there. Please give a a warm warm the Nightcap Live welcome. To Brad Jaffe. Brad, how are you? Dan, thanks so much for having me. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, man. Good to see you. Cheers. Ching. Yep. Ching. There we go. Um, Sorry to interrupt you when you were in the middle of uh, praising me, but. Well, you know, it's, uh, I, I could have gone on, man. I could have gone on, my friend. So uh, tell us a little bit about you that I didn't just tell everybody. <laughs> um, well, one thing I will say is that uh, I went to um, Northern Ireland for the first time last year. I, I, I do travel a lot in, in under normal circumstances for my job, obviously. It's a little bit different these days, but uh, one of my favorite trips that I took last year for work was to go to Northern Ireland for the first time in my life and actually make it to um, the oldest uh, continuously operated distillery, um, they say in the world, um, definitely over there in Northern Ireland, right? Um, and it was a beautiful place, so. Talking about Bushmills, right? Oh, yeah. Bushmills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they told you in the memo, you have to say that the brand name is often. Oh, Bush, Bush show, yes. Yeah. Bushmills. That was the one. Uh, I'm yes. contractually obligated to say it 117 times today. Um, how many map to? Two. One, I got 111 more. OK, so you went over there. Yes, Beautiful I place. I was over there actually uh, right before COVID hit. I was there the week before everything shut down. I was there and I went to Northern Ireland myself. Mm hmm. Surprisingly easy to get in there now. Back in the oh, day, yeah. it was a little more difficult. Uh, but you know, we can talk about that with Jack because I'm sure he'd love to dredge up that era of history. Yeah, <laughs> why, why wouldn't you? Um, okay, so you you write, as I mentioned, you write for a, a bunch of websites and publications. Can you tell us some of the stuff that you've got out there recently? You got some pretty cool pieces going. Uh, yeah, I mean, most of my stuff, as you mentioned, is for Cat Fancy. So I was writing a lot about, uh, you know, kind of like the best feline seven course meals that are out there. But when I'm not writing about that, um, I do write a lot about spirits. Um, you, you've had me on in your show in the past as we discussed uh, Japanese whiskey, the Japanese whiskey boom. Um, just today I was writing about um, premiumization because that's such a fun word to say in the bourbon sector. Um, we have a lot of releases that have come out over the past couple of months that um, are pretty astronomically high priced, I would say, for traditional uh, bourbon pricing. And it, it seems a little bit weird because here we are like in, you know, pretty challenging times. But actually some studies and reports have shown that the fact that we're spending all this time at home right now is actually driving people to not to, not necessarily drink more, but drink better. So that's kind of what I was talking about there. Interesting. Yeah. So you're saying the you're saying the we use it, average consumer is stepping up their game in terms of, of in terms of the uh, quality of what they're drinking. Theoretically, I mean, we know that there's a lot of hardships out there, so we don't want to trivialize that or minimize that. But for the people that are fortunate enough to to still have gainful employment, you're not going out and spending things that you normally would spend on like a very expensive meal or even, you know, a weekend trip to Palm Springs. So you save up all this money that you would have been spending. And now maybe some of that is being directed towards, oh, maybe I'll, you know, buy a thousand dollar bottle or a five hundred dollar bottle of of fancy whiskey. Well, all I know is I can't wait for the next round of stimulus because I'm buying a bottle of that 28-year-old uh, cognac cask from Bushmills. 
Yeah. Well, I think you'll be blowing the whole wad on that. I'm blowing the whole <laughs> wad on that bottle. That's what I'm doing because it seems like the sensible thing to do. Now, um, what? How did you get into this? How did you get into the 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 spirit scribe game? Um, I mean, I just felt like it was my calling. My parents always said that, you know, in high school and in college, I was just drinking very irresponsibly. Um, so really what was happening was I was just doing a lot of, of research for a future career. It just, you know, took a little bit of time, but, um, really what it came down to is just being in the right place, which was for me, uh, moving to the Bay area right after I graduated from college. And, uh, there was a very big, uh, beer scene, craft beer scene. Obviously there still is. Um, and I just got kind of sucked into that. I was drinking like, you know, a lot of swill in my, in my college days. And, and once I moved out there, I started becoming like a hop head and, and drinking, you know, some really quality craft beers that are made out there. And then I was like, Hey, like, you know, this is fun to write about. I might as well do that. And then that led one thing led to another whiskey. As we know, it takes a lot of great beer to make an excellent whiskey. So it's kind of like the natural evolution I would say, even though I do still write about beer. Um, but you know, it's, it's all part of the same spectrum. Who would you say are some of your heroes in terms of booze writers and ones that have sort of come before you? And I want you to think long and hard about this answer. (laughs) Um, I mean, is this aside from Dan Dunn or do I start? Just, just, just say my name. Just say okay. So, so Dan Dunn and he's all right. right moving on, with, moving on. Right no, no, with Michael yeah. Jackson, um, <laughs> but but not the beer writer, the actual the, the, the actual Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Well, I yeah. I have been known to moonwalk on some after some whiskey. I can say mm-hmm. that right now. So, uh, but I appreciate you uh, unprompted bringing me up. Now, uh, I think it's time we move on to the whiskey portion of this because we just have so much whiskey to get to tonight on the show. So. I, I, ready? We'll bring out our next guest. He is the brand ambassador educator for Bushmills Irish Whiskey. He was born over in K- County Derry, which is only seven miles away from where the old Bushmills distillery is located. He's always had a passion for whiskey, He's been working for the brand for almost a decade, and he is now the U.S. national brand ambassador. Please welcome Jack Ferris. Jack, how are you? Well, how's things? I'm grand. I'm grand. What about yourself? Yeah, we're good, man. We're, we're we're feeling good here. Thank you for 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 sending along this whiskey. Certainly helping, and uh, you 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 sent a bunch of it. So I uh, very quickly let's let's get into your background. You've been there for about a decade. How did this happen? How did your career at Bushmills take shape? So basically, I started uh, working at Bushmills whenever I actually didn't have that much of an interest in whiskey. So I actually started working on the bottling lines. From there, I started working in tourism. And then from there, I started working more and more within the production. Uh, so just about three years ago is whenever I came over to the United States. But still right up to the last day, I was still learning at the distillery. But one of the best things that I've had a hand with every area of production that you can imagine. And um, some of the things I'll miss most about there is working up in the warehouses. Uh, whenever we used to crack open the casks for the first time, you get those two, three seconds of air rushing in and just bringing out that flavor, maybe after 20, maybe after 25 years. So I've had my hand in almost every area um, you could imagine. So I've got quite a connection uh, with some of the whiskeys that we'll even go through tonight. Um, And then again, just coming to the United States, obviously before what's happened the last couple of months, um, I used to travel around three weeks out of every month. And so I've had had a great, great time uh, being here in America and just sharing and highlighting what Bush Mills is. And really tonight, is really what I've been telling everyone for the past two, maybe three years, like keep your eyes on Bushmills. Big things are about to happen. Well, tonight's that night. So, this is the night, huh? Now, where, where are you coming to us from tonight? So I am coming from Jersey City. Um, is, that in, is that in Northern Ireland? <laughs> Jersey City, New Jersey. <laughs> so uh, yeah, a little bit of a change, but the good thing, I'm only seven minutes from New York City. So, you know, hop around anywhere that I need to. There we go. Well, um, I'm excited to have you here, and I and I think I speak for Brad as well on that. Let's let's get in. I just want to remind everybody: if you have any questions or comments for Jack, Brad, or myself about these whiskeys, about life, the universe, everything, Douglas Adams reference. I we got that one. every episode. Uh, 
please do get in that comment box, fire it off to us. We, we want to hear from you. We want to get back to you. Maybe, maybe. And then also our contest, my Halloween costume. What should I wear this year? The most, two most clever answers are going to win this. They're going to win a 16 year old bottle of Bushmills and a Flaviar membership. All right. Covered that. Let's get into our first whiskey, Jack. What do we got now? So what we have here is our Bushmills 10-year-old single malt. So for anyone tasting along with us, this will be the letter D, Delta. So basically, start nosing it, start sipping it. And I'll explain a little bit, little bit about what Bushmills really is. So Bushmills, we are from the very north coast of Ireland. We're only one mile from the North Atlantic Ocean. So we're pretty much as far north as you can physically go. And we are the world's oldest licensed whiskey distillery. That license being signed back on the 20th of April, 1608. But we do know there's a written reference, even putting us back to 1276. So we've almost got a thousand years of distillation on the very site we still occupy today. And that name Bushmills comes from where we are and what we do. So the water that we use is coming from a tributary that goes to the main river, the River Bush, that goes through the village of Bush Mills. The part of Bush Mills, the mills part, comes from the first industry that was there, and that was the milling of the barley. So just the name Bush Mills explains where we are and what we do. And what Bush Mills is, is a triple distilled single malt. Well, that simply means that we distill three times using copper pot stills. And the pot still actually is our trademark. It was trademarked back in 1784, whenever we were actually founded as a licensed company, well, a limited company. So we have a connection to a pot still stronger than anyone else. And then that single malt aspect. So the big key thing is that probably a lot of the people watching tonight are taking part. They're more familiar with the Scottish style of single malt, which would be peated and smoked. We do not. So everything we use at Bush Mills is completely non-peated. And then we do every why, process why do you, ourselves. Why do, you, why do you hate peat, Jack? What's the problem? Uh, because it's the Scottish style. Uh, we're only 17 miles from Scotland. So, uh, you know, it's brotherly hatred. What they do and what we do, it'll be different. And, and 17 yeah. miles from Isla, correct? Yeah. So uh, probably one of the most notorious parts of Scottish single malt production is actually one of the closest parts to us. You can see it crystal clear. Um, from the Giant's Causeway, which is only a mile from us. So we are that close and we're that far north. But, you know, the first time they, they mentioned whiskey in Scotland was back in the, well, the mid-1400s. We're almost 200 years ahead of them. So uh, <laughs> there's something we're, we're very, very proud of. The fact Jack, we haven't you... changed, we haven't moved. We've stayed true to who we are. Jack, Shots would you fired. explain to people, you mentioned that, you know, you mentioned the copper still. Mm -hmm. What's the significance of that? in terms of the flavor profile of the whiskey? So really a copper pot still, and the best way to say it, it's the most inefficient way to distill <laughs> your whiskey. But what you get is the world's highest quality because a copper pot still, um, it's essentially like your old kettle. So, you know, your granny or grand does. That old kettle you put on the stove, it takes time. What will happen is that the vapors start running up and the heavier vapors will run back down. So in one distillation, you might have a multiple amount of distillations happening in there. And whenever it comes up the, the swan neck and condenses, what you're going to get is this really, really rich, full bodied and so many levels of character within there. And that's what a pot still makes different. A pot still, the longer you take with that, the more you're going to discover. And because we're using 100% single malt in there, that's not peated, you discover every single aspect possible. Dan, it's all, it's all about that copper conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, I mean, I, I think the people, you know, you, it's, you hear these terms bandied about a lot. And I think the average consumer maybe doesn't understand the difference between a, a, a column still and a pot still and what, what co why copper matters and, and you know. Yeah, a, a column essentially is very efficient. You get high volume, but your quality just isn't there. And you'll discover that. The longer you take with a glass of Bushmills single malt, even our blended whiskies, which the backbone of all of them is the high single malt content, what you discover is every little sip you build in that flavor, you build in that profile. So I always tell anyone their first time discovering Bushmills, just take your time. 
by the time you get to that third sip, you'll just start discovering more and more and more. And the longer you take with it, the more you get back from it. And that's with every one of our family. Well, this one, I, I got to say, Brad, and, and you tell, are you, this one is really fruity to me on the nose. Oh, yeah. It's very, it's a very fruit forward scotch. Are you, are you getting that as well, Brad? No, I get, I get a great amount of complexity always from the 10 year old, especially for a 10 year old whiskey. I would love to know how much of that, if, if Jack could speak to that, comes from that third distillation. Cause that to me is the real differentiation point from scotch. Cause I drink plenty of scotches that don't uh, have peated malt. But, you know, that triple distillation is, is very unique to Scotland, aside from like one or two Scotch distilleries. So, yeah, I mean, there's an exception to every rule, every style of what's being made. And uh, so obviously, whenever we talk about Irish to Scottish, we're doing a little more of the generalization. There's an exception to every rule in the world. But if you remember being in the distillery, whenever you're in that still house, there are 10 copper pots still surrounding you, all working at maximum capacity. The aroma in there is this peaches, it's pear drops. It's almost a little bit of red apple. And, and yet it is crystal clear. What I actually have here, as it's going through my apartment, is that I actually have some of our distillate. It is crystal clear. And yet that is the Bushmills house style. It's that fruitiness, it's that floral. It's almost a little bit buttery. And you will well, get- I, You say butter, I, I was getting oily. a little toffee on there and also a little bit of- uh, it almost is like a there's a chocolate shake element to it. A little bit of that. So what and you're going to get there now, that's going to be the, the fact this is a two-wood whiskey. So we've got whiskey maturing inside a former uh, bourbon barrel and a former Spanish Oloroso sherry cask. It's going to be predominantly bourbon barrel because that's why with a bourbon barrel, we tend to find more of those honeyed notes, one of those caramelization notes, a little bit more of that softy, creamy vanilla. Mm. We tend to find that sherry cask draws towards the back of the palate. And sherry cask, particularly all that are also sherry, with it typically being very inherently dry and nutty, that hint of a nuttiness, this is why a lot of people get that milk chocolate. But again, whiskey is very personal. I know we've all got the tasting notes with us for any, anyone that's tasting along with us. The whiskey's personal. But the big thing I want you to discover with the tenure, how light, how crisp, how delicate it is. And this is always my summertime whiskey uh, because it is just so light. It is just... It's dry, but it dries elegantly. So unlike a typical always, bourbon where the dryness means a bite or a burn, this is the classic Bushmill smoothness of where it just brings you back in for more and more. So, I always find it to be one of history's great ironies that, you know, the, the, the Irish held on to this pot still uh, distillation for so long, and yet it was an Irishman that goes along and invents essentially column distillation. Yeah, the, the, the name coffee still comes after the Irish inventor. Uh, but, you know, thankfully at Bushmills up in the north coast of Ireland, you know, we're made of stubborn people. We're people who <laughs> stay true to who we are. So uh, we refuse to change. Even the malt barley tax that came in that made a lot of the other Irish styles of whiskey change their, their mash bill. We stayed true to who we were. Um, and that is why Bushmills is, you know, one of the world's greatest and best whiskeys, one of the world's most award winning whiskeys as well. And so why did it you, lasted so long, too. I mean, this guys, is a. Oh, go ahead, Brad. I was just going to say, did you guys ever, during that long history of your dis distillery, did you ever do a uh, single pot, single pot still distillation? So pot still style, uh, which you'd be referring to, that's a mixture of malted and unmalted barley, which you uh -huh. tend to find some of the bigger Irish distilleries that might be on the south coast will use that style. We, we have stayed true to using single malt. Um, and it's just something that is why we've been who we are. That is why we've been, you know, one of the world's biggest Irish whiskies for a very long period of time, right up until pretty much prohibition started to change all of that. And it's why we became world famous. It's why we won one, one of the world's first gold medals for a whiskey in the Paris Expo of 1889. It's the Bushmills style. We, we became we famous like for just in this style. We're not going to change that style. We'll still what's amazing, what's we amazing to bring up here is that, you know, the longevity of Bushmills, which you talked about earlier, and I, I have talked about this before on this show, people need to understand that, you know, by the late 20th century, the category of Irish whiskey was in serious, serious trouble. There was a handful, I mean, and I mean a handful, three or four whiskeys that were, that you could, were commercially available anywhere, really, but you know, in the United States. And to see the comeback that's happening now has got to be, and I understand, obviously, they're competitors, but there's got to be a sense of pride 
Jack on the on the on the side of the Bushmills folks that they held up and they 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 kept it together because I I, I mean it it was almost gone Irish whiskey and these couple of brands and and Jameson obviously was another one that helped drive that as well and and uh, the fact that you guys stayed in the game and then all of a sudden it started to turn and people rediscovered Irish whiskey I don't think that happens if it isn't for brands like Bushmills. And now you've got what? How many distilleries are in? I mean, just in Dublin now, they're opening distilleries all over. But how many? Do you know how many distilleries are in Ireland now? Thirty-four, as of <laughs> I believe the last two or three months. How so many we were there from, in uh, 1990? 1990, One? we were three distilleries. Three, yeah. And so, I, and even in the year 2000, we were three. So you know, it shows just how much Irish whiskey is blowing up. And then the fact that we at Bushmills have now just decided to unlock these whiskies that we have hidden for decades and decades, always just kept hidden up in the background. We've decided to unlock those warehouses and show everyone what we're truly capable of. The rare casks. So we got some stuff. We got people coming in here. Uh, Jack, uh, uh, Louis Anderson, Louis Anderson. Louis Anderson's a comedian. Is that, is that a comedian? Maybe, I don't know. It could be. Yeah, I don't think so. Because he said, tell Jack there's an Irishman from uh, Port Stewart watching. Moved to the U.S. 12 years ago, now in Colorado. I believe Jack is from Coleraine. Is that right? Uh, that is correct. Port Stewart is only about three miles away from me. Uh, Port Stewart, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. And then just around the corner, we've got Port Rush uh, with some of my favorite bars in there. So, Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's Chris, a true neighbor, three miles. Chris Maxwell said, Jack, if you're gifting your best friend a bottle of Bushmills for his 50th, so me, I guess you mean what's an impressive bottle, what would you give him? If you know, the 28-year-old is rare, and we're going to get to just how rare that is later on, I would suggest the Bushmills 21. So <laughs> the Bushmills 21. He's a good friend. This guy's a good friend right good here. Good friend, yeah. yeah. Bushmills 21. Yeah. This is a whiskey that I would highly recommend. And the reason for this is the fact, and I'll just put this simply, with Whiskey Advocate, um, they scored Pappy Van Winkle at 96 points. Bushmills 21-year-old is 96 points. That gives wow. you an idea of the caliber that whiskey stands up to at a fraction of the price. And that whiskey is rare. Um, this is actually a 2016 bottling. I was working up in the warehouses in 2016. I know the age of the whiskey well, that went in there. Um, can't really say, but it's old and it's Jack, beautiful. forget forget the comparisons to Pappy. It's just like, you know, in Scotland, some of the 21 year old bottlings of single malt that you'd get there and how much more you'd spend for compared to, I mean, I don't want to give you any ideas or your business people, any ideas, but this is a ridiculously reasonably priced 21 year old single malt and like ridiculously. So. And you can make that bottle last. I can make a bottle of 21 last about two years. It's just for those special, special moments. That's because yeah, you're not hanging out with Brad and I. Yeah, I was going to say. You're going to hang out with us more. It'll last you about a couple hours. Uh, now, we've got to bring out the Blackfish. <laughs> because we have so many whiskeys, let's, let's, let's jump on to our next one here. And this is the uh, Bushmills 16-year-old rare uh, Three Wood. Yes. And Jack, how long uh, did you work at Bushmills for? In, in, I worked uh, at Bushmills for seven years. So from when I was 18. Um, so actually, you know, just this time last year ago, 10 years ago, was my first job, which is Bushmills Inn, which you might have stayed at if you visited the distillery. Yeah, I there's did. Only, I did there's indeed. only 1,100 people living in that village, so <laughs> it's small. But uh, that was my first job, and then I moved on to the distillery. So, yeah, just pretty much 10 years with the brand, over 10 years working with the your, village. Your, your entire adult life, you've been with Bushmills, is what I'm hearing right now. Yes, my entire legal uh, drinking <laughs> life has been with Bushmills. There's but, a different um, yeah, there, right? So it's the a 16 different age. rules yeah. that we have. And this 16, for anyone who knows it, they understand the caliber of whiskey we're getting into. For anyone who doesn't, this is a whiskey that develops in three different, in three different ways because it is also a three-wood whiskey. So we've put this whiskey to rest, to mature for at least 16 years inside a former bourbon barrel. We put it inside a former Oloroso sherry cask for 16 years as well. We then marry those two single malts together and then we finish it for at least six months, and at least six months, inside a Portuguese port wine pipe, which is why whenever you see the bottle of 16-year-old bull, which I you know, Brad, you've got right beside you, 
um, it's got this dark ruby red color. Now, what we tend to find with the levels of maturation, that bourbon barrel draws out those caramelization notes at the front of the palate. So caramelized fruit, and then it starts to develop toasted wood, toasted nut, and then you'll get the almond coming at the back of the palate. This is where the sherry cask starts to let itself known. But because we're at this age of whiskey, there's body, there's depth, keeps going through the neck, deep into the chest. You really notice the body now. But then the best thing that's gonna happen is you get right here between the neck and chest, this is where you taste that port. It's dark summer fruits, dark summer berries, almost like a compote berry jam. So this, as we're starting to get a little bit colder, as the nights are getting a little bit darker, and as Thanksgiving is only just around the corner, this is something I will always have with cigar, good friends. And particularly for Thanksgiving, whenever people are brought together, and particularly if we all have to stay outside, you've got the campfire on. You're all gathered around, stories are being swapped. Get a glass of 16 in one hand, find cigar in the other, and you will have a Thanksgiving to remember. It's the funny, Jack. Year old will it's always, funny. always be my cigar whiskey. It's funny that you mentioned cigars because to me, and, and I've always been in love with this whiskey for a long period of time, I've actually preferred it to the 21. I've since evolved my opinions on that. But uh, to me, it's always given off like a little bit of smoke elements and not like peat smoke, not at all peat smoke. But it's a different kind of smoke. It's like, you know, like uh, more of like a barbecue kind of smoke than it is, you know, a medicinal iodine kind of peat smoke. But it, it always has imparted that to me when I taste it. Yeah, if you remember, like with 16 years inside a bourbon barrel and we're using predominantly number two and number three char, 16 years of that, because we're in the honeypot age, like between 15, 18 years, that's where that charred element after 16 years at least, that's where we're going to come. You can get that charred oakiness. That's where that element comes through. So yeah, you're right. It's not a peat smoke because a lot of people say it's smokiness. It's more of that charred oakiness. So it's different. But yeah, it's it's a fantastic whiskey. So if you can ever get your hands on it, and if you're in the liquor store, you've got 16 year old there, and they've got a cigar cabinet. Yeah, you're you're also the complexity that it imparts for something that is relatively young I, I don't want to say it's young but i think that a lot of connoisseurs think oh i need to be drinking things that are 21 and above say or draw some sort of you know arbitrary line there but for 16 year old whiskey there's just it, it evolves in the palate you did such a great way obviously describing it like you're tasting it in different parts of your throat but it's mm -hmm. like when i taste it at, at first and then you know i let it linger it's a totally different whiskey than what entered my mouth which is just phenomenal it never ceases to amaze me yeah you get three different styles bourbon characteristic of the front sherry towards the back and then that port afterglow it's it's a beautiful beautiful whiskey it's a beautiful thing we um lorenzo sanchez says do you ever use px gas funny he should say that um that will be our second last whiskey we'll be trying tonight uh, will that be, actually be a Pedro Jimenez uh, cask. Um, they're very, very hard to get your hands on. And um, the fact we have that for the tasting tonight, just because I know how the distillery operates, is phenomenal of just how exceptional and how rare this actually is. Um, Pedro PX casks, they are so, they're almost like gold dust. Um, but yes, um, we have been using them and we will be tasting that um, in not too, not too long. Jack, I'm just Not realizing now that we're we're looking at your your kitchen as the backdrop, and I think like we could all use a kitchen just like that. <laughs> yeah, with um with the uh, lockdown that we had recently, and then probably the next one, uh, I've had to repurpose my kitchen for. Where uh, do your groceries go, Jack? Do you, do you have groceries? I've 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 had to I've had to change what I do in the kitchen. <laughs> so de dedicated to Bushmills, dedicated to the brand. I think it's time we move on. We're moving up in age here. Next up, we've got the uh, Bushmills 23-year-old Crystal Malt Irish. Yes. And Let's this is where this. things are going to step up to a new level. Well, it's um, already a higher alcohol level, right? This is a 50%? These, yeah, this is going to be sitting at 50%, and that's a 50% average. This oh. is something very unique, something very rare. <laughs> Something, and this is where we can really start to talk about the people behind the brand. Um, Helen Mulholland, who's been the master blender. 
Helen, this is this is one of her true favourites, and this is something that so the crystal malt. Just for anyone who isn't aware, crystal malt is where we take barley that has still got a phenomenally high moisture content, so it hasn't been dried out, and then we put it through a very deep roast. Now, by doing this, um, the malted barley itself, typically the malted barley, whenever you grind it into your grist, uh, you'll see it's white on the inside. This isn't. This will actually be black, almost like a dark, dark brown on the inside. What you'll tend to find is that crystal malt will actually draw out more of these dark chocolate notes, sometimes marzipan, sometimes more of these richer almond notes. It's a very, very complex. The reason this is a 23-year-old is actually we started doing this um, back in 1997. And we did this back in 1997 to actually celebrate our 400th anniversary back in 2008. So we launched a very limited edition um, a style of whiskey called the 1608 Anniversary. Um, I mean, if anyone can find it in their, in their liquor stores or the mom and pop stores, get it because we only produced it one time just for the 400th anniversary but we didn't use all the whiskey and what we have is some of the whiskey that was allowed to rest up in those warehouses just that little bit longer and what you'll just notice that higher proof and this is not chill filtered is that suddenly the body is so much more and jack would you just explain for people out there what Ooh. non what non chill filtered means? So the reason we do chill filtering for our standard uh, line of bush mills, everything from our three blends to our three single malts, is for consistency. Um, by non chill filtering, we're not removing any of the esters. We're not removing anything else. We're not removing any other unique components of the whiskey. The problem by doing that is that you don't get consistency because what we are proud about ourselves in bush mills is that whenever you try Bushmills today, tomorrow, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, it will always taste the way you remember it. We even have a bottle in our distillery, um, our, a bottle of our Bushmills original from the first time we launched it back in 1888. Um, it's only half full now. So some was, was uh, consumed, some was sent onto your lab. But the mash bill and the style of that whiskey is still remarkably similar to what we're still producing today over 130 years later. So that yeah, gives you an so. idea why we do chill filtering, is that it gives that level of consistency. Non-chill filtering is really for more of those special, unique one-offs. But what you'll just notice is that it will coat everything in your palate, every single area within your palate will have a different nuance. You'll notice it's a lot more oily. You'll notice that your so palate will salvage. Notes. Yeah. So it's again, you get the nose. You're going to get, again, the house style of Bushmills, that fruitiness, more of that honeyed apple. Mm. And then, obviously, with the higher proof, that warmth. So that's why the middle of the tongue really salivates. And then it just that oiliness comes through. The toffee notes, but the dark chocolate. Whenever you notice it, it's more that rich cocoa. And then you'll just it's, notice it's beautiful. Yeah, to me, it's, it's, it's all coffee. Dan, you getting coffee over there? Is this just my messed up palate? No, I, but I, again, I'm maybe I'm just dialed in tonight to cocoa and chocolate, but that seems to be what I'm getting the most from the from this one and, and the previous whiskey as well. But a little bit of a little bit of that coffee note going on there. We just must go to different roasters, is what it mm. is. I got to stop drinking Folgers, I guess. That's probably what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Folgers just strong. doesn't hit this hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, let me see. We got any uh, people commenting in here? Oh, uh, is the twelve-year-old Joe Marcus is asking? Is the twelve-year-old single malt is that available in America? No. Uh, the is it ever old... going to be available, Joe? So Marcus actually, wants to yeah, know. the twelve-year-old single malt, which is actually the blue uh, bottle behind me, that is a distillery reserve. So we only keep that exclusively at the distillery. So for anyone, um, cool. else, whenever we can travel again, that makes that journey out there, and um, that is exclusively for them to reward them for that so it's if you make the effort come out to us in the distillery that's when you can get it jack when was the last time that 23 was available in the united states this is the first time it's ever been available oh yeah you, use you hear this that thing. folks go to flaviar 
Get in there. Get so this, is, this is these whiskeys right that we're going to be trying up until the end. These are world uniques, world I love specials, history. Well, completely one offs. I know Dan. If we can go to Ireland. Way. You won't be able to try this. Unbelievable. So, so this is only made these, that once. Yeah, these are cask samples. So what these, what this whiskey and the next two whiskeys we're going to try, this really brings into what the rare casks and uh, what the rare cask series is going to be. So at the minute, obviously, we've got a 28-year-old cognac cask that we'll try um, at the end of this. But this is the beginning of a series of new whiskeys that we're going to be bringing uh, to the United States and to the world. Jack, so, one thing, one yeah, thing one I of these next three out. whiskeys, they're going to be the next. They're going to be number two. One thing I want to point out, just you know, uh, writing about spirits a lot and writing about whiskey, is that you kind of see some of these fallacies that are out there. One is that age always equals, you know, something that's better. Age equals better. Another is, is the color as well, that people will look at something that is this light. This is, this is straw colored. Um, people would look at this and just, you know, then look at, at A and, and be like, okay, well, obviously A is going to be better. And it, it just, it doesn't always have to correlate. Like this is an incredibly complex whiskey. For my palate, I think it's the most complex one that I've tried thus far. And it is by far the lightest as well. So I think that's important for people to just keep in mind. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people think color dictates age, color dictates quality, color dictates a lot of things. No, color tells you how it was aged, um, which this will be a first fill bourbon barrel, um, which is why you always get that lighter and um, more light gold color coming through. But yeah, after 23 years, it still holds that light golden hue. It's exceptional. It's so oh, I, have a, I have a question. Jack, what's your favorite color? <laughs> Unfortunately, I, th I think it's going to have to be pink. Um, my brand home manager dictated the shirt for me, and it always makes me stand out in whiskey fests. So you know, it's right. it's worked well. Oh, it looks good on you. It looks good on you, yeah. Jack. What's Brad's, your, what's your Brad's is tartan, tartan, right? Yeah. What's your uh, What's your favorite U two album, Jack? Oh just no, to get, just yeah, to I get Dan worked up. On my, <laughs> oh, no, we'll no, talk no. about my. We'll talk about you when we had a we had a call earlier before we did this, and and Jack made it be known that the Irish don't like U two, and then I said, well, I'll forgive Jack for saying that, but <laughs> <clears throat> let's move on. And by the way, remind everybody out there: questions, comments, fire them off to us. Contest is we only got about five, ten more minutes to get their contest entries in. How to win the Flaviar membership, the 16-year-old bottle of Bushmills. Tell me what I should wear. I need a Halloween costume suggestion. And the most clever suggestions, top two of those are going to win the prize. It's not going to be this prize. This prize right here is the 25-year-old Marsala cask Woo. from Bushmills. And I'm excited. Brad, are you excited? I am. Can you feel the intensity? Where would you rate your level of excitement? Would it be you're in a U2 concert seeing where the streets have no name level of excitement or you're seeing the Pogues and Shane McGowan is about to fall over at the end of the show and the audience is left? What, what level uh, of excitement are you at here? No, no, I'm like getting to see uh, Jerry Garcia solo uh -oh. uh, at Cornell in yes, 1977. She doesn't even know who that is. Come on, man. <laughs> Jack, what's your favorite Irish band then? Come on, give it to us. Thin Lizzy? Mm, he's band more of a cranberries Paris? guy. Cranberries? Actually, yeah, cranberries. Cranberries I knew always, it. always it was a the good pink. call. It was the pink that gave it away. Well, you yeah. know what? You're going to raise a toast to Dolores O'Riordan, then you're going to raise yeah, this seriously. Bushmills 25 year old. Let's do that. The late great. She passed, what, last year? That was, that was like two years ago now, Dan. Cranberry. She died like two years yeah, ago. Yeah, it was two years ago. Post her with this Bushmills. Did, did you see the Miley Cyrus cover of, of Zombie? Did you? That was pretty oh. impressive, I thought. Good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jack right now. Jack's going away. What Jack's doing? steaming. No, it was actually really, really impressive. <laughs> Do you like Miley Cyrus, Jack? <laughs> uh, well, well, we'll put a pass on that question. <laughs> All, right. All right. Phone a friend. But he likes the cranberry. He likes the cranberry's version of Zombie. He'll take over Miley Cyrus's. All right. 25-year-old Marsala cask from Bush Mills. Take it away. So the 25-year-old, this is going to be what we call another style of three-wood whiskey. But this will be different. So we're going to have this maturing for a minimum 10 years inside former bourbon barrels, a minimum 10 years inside former sherry casks. Again, we're using Oloroso sherry for this. And then we're going to put it uh, for a finish of at least between 14 and 15 years inside marsala casks 
And their salad casks, it's almost a little bit more of a fortified wine. This is going to make it almost very dessert style. Um, the last time I actually tried this, it's the first Ooh. I'm going to try it with you as well. The last time I tried this in the distillery was actually um, half this age. So with this extra level of maturation, with your, these caramel notes we can get from the bourbon barrel, these dried fruits, nutty notes from the sherry cask, and then this dessert wine finish, if you wish, almost like a sauter, if you wish, at the end, we're in for a big treat. And remember the Bushmills house style. It's those ripe, floral, buttery fruits. So this combination of these th three style of barrels for our house style of distillate, we're in for a big treat. So, mm. and again, as I mentioned about the sherry cask, there's dried fruits. Jack, how many um, toasts do you have squared away up there in the noggin? A lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, can do, um, I can do whiskey tastings for six, seven, eight different styles yeah. that we do. Got a different this, one for each one. This is a real deficiency of American culture is we have like cheers and that's it. You know, can we have a can we, we just, have a toast, Jack? Can yeah, we have one? Something. So, oh, well, I'm going to save my best one for the last one. But um, there are long ships, there are tall ships, there are ships that sail the sea. But there's no ships like friendships, and may they always be. Slauncha. Slauncha. Mm. And again, my what you just notice with getting into this age caliber of whiskey, everything slows down. Everything mellows out. And the longer you take with this, the more you're just going to notice of how much those lingering subtle notes will just start becoming more and more vibrant. I get a little even bit of if you look at the glass, If you look at the legs, the legs are just holding like there's no tomorrow. This gives you another indication. The stronger the legs are within the whiskey, the longer you should be taking. And the Did more you there is to discover within there. Mm. And There's again, a, little bit of licorice, a little bit of licorice going licorice, on there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good, good. I'm, uh, hmm. This one to me is the, is the actually the spiciest one that we've had. Yeah. There's pepper. For me, I'm getting a little bit of what's the, uh, oh, it's, this is also, uh, this is also a 50% alcohol by volume, right? So, but you know what? It has a lot more heat than the seed. It does, I, I, I thought that this might be a higher alcohol content because yeah, totally. I'm definitely getting that warming here in my chest more yeah. with this one. Yeah, now if you remember the 23-year-old, uh, that was a crystal malt. So the crystal malt provides a very, very different style. A lot of people don't realize just how different crystal malt really brings a different character to the whiskey. This, we're back to your full 100% uh, standard single malt. It makes the core of all Bushmills whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, so this is where we're going to get a little more of that clarity coming through, which also, again, delivers a little more of that heat, a little more of that warmth. But with that little more heat, that little bit more warmth, it makes you slow down. And by slowing down, it gives us an opportunity to discover more and more and just those different levels of sweetness. Again, remember, we're going to get dried fruit sweetness from the sherry cask. We're going to get more of those caramel honey notes sweetness from the bourbon bar. But then we're going to get this really rich, intense, heavy, almost like a syrupy sweetness, very viscous. That's going to be really that Marsala cask that really really draws it out and provides this level of complexity that you re almost have to sit back in your seat and just kind of watch what's happening within your own palate. Because I know with these cask samples that we have, yes, we've got the tasting notes, but this is where whiskey becomes so, so personal. Over, of course, you know, us three will guide you in the right direction. But this is also your discovery. Everyone's palate will react slightly differently. And the only way to break that down is just by giving it more and more and more time. And this is the beauty of Bushmills. And that's why Bushmills steps ahead of all other Irish whiskies, because you can never stop discovering what is within that whiskey. I've been drinking the 21 year old for 10 years now. Every time I try it, I discover something different. Jack, and John is, McCarthy, John McCarthy sounds like a good Irishman. I know a couple. Well, of them. I guess he's not a good Irishman because he's never tried Bushmills. So he's never <laughs> tried, John. Come on, get with the program. That's not John McCarthy, I know. John McCarthy said he's never tried Bushmills, and he's looking for that first bottle. I'm going to assume he means let's not go with the most exclusive, expensive bottle there is. What's your if you if Jack if you want somebody you know to just get the quintessential 
Bushmills, the, the flavor profile that is Bushmills, and maybe not have to break the bank. What's what's that first bottle they should get? So there is two options I would give if you want to discover Bushmills for the first time, but you know you want to just discover it on you know before you commit to a bigger spend. Our white label, our Bushmills original, um, it's a blended whiskey. It's going to be. 50% single malt, 50% tailor-made grain spirit. And it's going to be bourbon barrels. You're going to get all these Bushmill sweetnesses. And the best thing about it, it's versatile for the perfect Irish coffee. And we've got a bar in New York City that is producing the world's finest Irish coffee. One of the most no, simple recipes about. as well. Or if you want something more full-bodied and richer, our Black Bush, which is an 80% single malt mash bill. Unheard of for a blended whiskey. Those two. I would heavily encourage. But if you want to discover true single malt, for the price point, our Bushmills tenure. But it, that is a very light, floral, delicate whiskey. So it also depends on your palate. Um, whenever someone asks me, which Bushmills should I go for? I normally ask them, what do you drink? Because I'll find out which Bushmills will suit you best. Because each one of our Bushmills is a different characteristic. They're all different moods. Someone asks me, which one's my favorite? Depends where I am what I'm doing, who I'm with, and what time of day it is. You know, are we late into the night, or is it, are we just like early in the evening? Brad, what were you saying? I was just going to say, do you make uh, grain whiskey as well, or it's just specially made for you, correct? It is tailor-made for us. So uh -huh. it actually used to be made in my hometown, Cool Rain, uh, before that got shut down completely. They started shutting down between 1972 and 1976. Uh -huh. um, but we've been using them for well over 100 years before that. Yeah, so there's not, the, not a lot of not yeah. a lot of grain whiskey being made in, in Northern Ireland, is there? No, no. So that actually gets made solely for our specification. Um, so no one else has access to it. It's a recipe made solely <coughs> for us, and it replicates awesome. identically what Coal Rain Whiskey Distillery used to do. And so it goes back 100 years plus. Oh, yeah. It goes back hundreds of years. Um, so, yeah, it is completely unique to ourselves. And this is one of the best things that like nobody will come close to what we produce at Bushmills. Um, we've had 412 years of practicing what we do. Um, everything I have learned, everything I'm talking about, I've learned from the predecessors. I've learned from working at the distillery. They learned it from their predecessors. Bushmills is so unique because we've got such a long lineage of knowledge being passed down. What works in our climate? What works for our water? What works for the wintertime compared to the summertime? That level of knowledge you can't discover after five or 20 years. Can't even discover that after 40 years. That's taken hundreds of years of knowledge. And that is why Bushmills will simply always be uh, the best uh, that there is on the market. Yes. Love any, any plans for Bushmills to do a Pachin? I know a lot of, a lot of the, the big brands are starting to put them out now. So, so, so tell people what Pachin is, first of all. Well, Pachin is essentially the Irish version of Moonshine. Uh, Moonshine does actually come from the Irish and Scottish immigrants um, into this country. Um, essentially, it's an illicit style liquor, typically made from potatoes. Um, sometimes other grains can be used, but if you wish this um, this spirit that we make, which I like to call baby bushmills, this is essentially your potching. The problem is, if we sell this now, we won't have whiskey in five years. <laughs> we need to let this sit, rest, and settle. I mean. We have whiskey that we're going to try tonight that is literally as old as me, um, within a month of my age. So, Wait, how, how old is that again? How old is that? 28. 28 hey, years. quit, quit 28 bragging, buddy. Years. Quit bragging, okay? By the way, I need to do my, I, I, I think I need to, is it, it's almost six. I got to get my warm milk soon, so we should probably, oh we got to get, well, because I'm an old man, you know, you got to, you got to roll on these things. Well, we're, we're and, definitely... uh, We've definitely gotten into this zone, Dan, where I, I call it like the quiet contemplative zone where you get into that, you know, kind of uh, threshold. You cross that threshold of whiskey where it's like you take a sip of it and you can't even really speak. You just got to retreat into your own thoughts. And that to That's me it. is the sign of a great whiskey. We I'm have done. a question from Scott Alexander, Jack. Mm -hmm. He said, if you have to pick a favorite U2 song, which is it? <laughs> no, no, we're not going to. You can't even pick not one song. <laughs> I love I'll the pick Dan, a cranberry I love song. The I'm not a huge cranberries Dan. fan, but I I love uh, well, my life changing every day. What's that called? Dreams. Every day. Dreams. Yeah. 
Dreams. Yeah, I, all right. I picked one of your favorite band. I'll pick one of my favorite band. You have to listen to one U2 song. What is it? No, no. I wouldn't I would wow. get crucified by, by the distillery stuff. <laughs> Not even <laughs> one song. You can't name one U2 song, with or without you. Come on. You have listened to With or Without You and, and cried about a woman before, haven't you? Yeah. Admit yeah. it, yeah, well, yeah, no. Whenever, whenever times are not great, yes, that's when YouTube comes out. So yes, with or without you, probably will definitely be. All right, see, there we go. All right, we're making progress here. Making progress. We're going to go on to Jack teased earlier when somebody asked about those uh, the Pedro Jimenez casks. This is a 28 year old Bushmills wow. aged in Pedro Jimenez casks, and let's get into it. Tell us yeah. about this one, Jack. So this is something so rare that whenever I discovered it, it was brought over here to the United States. And it could be um, part of our second series of the Rare Cask series, um, because that's why we're trying these three unique samples. It's like one of these three is almost certainly going to become the second inner line of the Rare Cask series of Bushmills. This is a continuation. So every year we'll bring out something new. So this is our third option. We call this four casks, Pedro Jimenez casks, so rare and so unique that, again, as I said earlier, they're like gold dust. The difference of a of a PX cask compared to another also sherry cask is that essentially everything is amplified, and to put it in the most um, understandable terms, so it's richer, it's more robust, it's deeper, it's heavier. There's a darker, longer finish. Darker. Look at this color on this thing, man. I yeah. mean, this like is serious. this is it's red. Like this serious. is like this is like. This is some dark stuff right here, you know. How, so what? How how is that? Brad Brad mentioned it earlier. I mean, we the twenty three year old, I guess it was. It was very light. So how does that happen, Jack? How is it? How is this one that's you know woo, five years older woo. get this much darker? So the fact we're going to be using European oak. So our bourbon barrel for the twenty three year old, and uh, that's going to be using Northeast Coast American white oak. And um, the way it grows with the climate, um, it's not as dense. The, you know, southern Spain, uh, sorry, southern France and northern Spain, where we get uh, our European white oak from, the climate there provides a much denser wood characteristic. So for anyone who's ever caught me at Whiskey Fest, I'll always have the two wood samples with me. So you can hold them side by side. And there is significant weight difference for the exact same size of wood sample. So with that, it means that the whiskey just takes longer. It takes more effort for it to expand and contract through. And with that, it's going to pick up a much richer, much darker color. And again, it's how it's treated. Typically, sherry casks are toasted on the inside, whereas American bourbon barrels are charred. So you get this crocodile effect. So, for example, if you rub, rub your fingers on the inside of a bourbon barrel, um, they'll come out black. It's almost like a charcoal which is essentially what it is. Whereas with a sherry cask, when you rub your fingers on it, because it's been toasted, you won't get any anything rubbing off. And so everybody understands the difference there. When he's talking about a char, what happens is the barrel goes down the line and they blast it blast with it. an intense amount of flame that just... <sighs> Whereas toasting, longer, slower process. You're not... They're burning the hell out of the inside of the barrel and they're charring it. And when they're toasting it, it's a very slow process. Subtlety. Yeah. Subtlety. It's the difference between like me and Brad. He's subtle. I'm charred. He's toasted. <laughs> I'm charred. Can that be our new nicknames? You're, you're like a char four. Char By the way, four. Brad lives here in LA. Maybe we could pitch this series. Toast and char. <laughs> By day, they're cops. By night, <laughs> they're whiskey aficionados. Jack, what do you think of this idea? He likes this as, about as much as he likes you too. Yeah. As long as it. you have the sunglasses, Dan, for your play hey, hey. indicator. Oh! <laughs> one's toast, one's char. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Telling you. By the way, somebody's watching this right now, going, "That's a pretty good idea." You haven't been in. Yep. Have, have you ever been to L.A., Jack? I uh, my first year here in America, a lot. Um, got a lot of family <laughs> out there as well. So um, yeah, I uh, definitely miss Southern California a lot. Yeah, I'm thinking now since up in the northeast, winter is starting to show its ugly face. There's some sound. Not here. Points. I know. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to here. act like it's cold here, but I'm put on like a fall shirt, but it's it's still pretty warm. Well, Brad's dressed like it's winter. 
but it's I 75 mean, it's degrees gotten, here today. It's gotten cold. I'm, I'm a little bit further uh, inland than you, so I don't know. Maybe it's just different He's weather patterns. He's in Culver City. I'm in Venice. <laughs> He's in Culver City. So, yeah, it's more the more mountainy area of L.A. <laughs> hey, Dan, why don't you get on the 405 and take it to the 10 and get out of here? <laughs> hey, how did you get here? Um, all right. Let me just – I want to tell you right now, deadline cut off for the prizes right now to win – if you if you you got 30 seconds, if you want to put in a Halloween costume for me to win the prize, because we got to get to that, because we do have one more whiskey to get to, and it's kind of it's kind of the bell of the ball tonight, right? This is this is the thing we're doing. So I can't dump this though. I can't dump this. Oh, I mean, damn this 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 whiskey, man, is this is the 28. Ice, well, no, this is yeah. the 28 PX Sherry cask. I, I can't know, dump this. I'm so I'll just it. put it in a different glass. There we go. So yeah, I'm well, tasting well, it two minutes after I sipped it. Yeah, this is whenever we're starting to get this age caliber of whiskey, what I love to do is what we just did there right now. We have a conversation, we take our mind off because it's so subtle, so complex. It's a gentle giant that it needs time to develop. And again, this is a key thing I keep saying about Bushmills. The longer you take with it, the more you keep discovering and you won't stop discovering with that. And again, it's just with the PX cast, that toffee note, softer spice, more of that dry. And by the way, the PX, the, the PX cast, that's the, we have a question. Actually, somebody came in with this and I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but Gary Turner was asking, is it only a Pedro Jimenez cask for that one for Sam, for the, for the, um, the 28 year old, that's for the only this, kind of cask you're using to, yeah, to for finish. For this cask sample, which could be one of the three, um, which could be, well, it's one of our three options for next year's rare cask. Yes. This is 28 years old inside of Pedro Jimenez cask. Okay. All right. I love the way I love the way you did the uh, you worked in the Castellano, the Spanish in there. We don't really do that over here. Yeah, it's it's uh, whenever I say the uh, the uh, it's like where we get it from uh, the Antonio Payet family bodega in Jerez in southern Spain. Because I worked at the distillery, because we had all the international visitors in. Yeah, we had to say our we had to say our pronunciations spot on. Heck yeah, you're Wait, good. When I. Are you guys hearing that noise every time I get a message? No. No. Whose message? You don't hear the Spain? blink, blink, blink. You're not hearing that. No, I think it's inside your head. This is the part of the show where I lose my mind, Jack. No, I'm just wondering if you're hearing it because I hear it, and I'm wondering if everybody at home's hearing it and being annoyed by it because I've no. tried to turn it off. Do you think it's? Do you think it's a, a like a demon or something, Brad? Like it's yeah, only me I, hearing it? Yeah, yeah. I think somebody's okay. cast a spell. I mean, oh, it's one of those nights. Nice. It's the Irish. It's the people Irish. Partying yeah. nearby. I'm telling you. All right. Now so, we're going to do this. We're doing the 28-year-old cognac cask. Come so on. This, this is going to be the rarest whiskey we've Shendo. ever produced at Bushmills. Uh, we've only rarest been able to whiskey you've ever produced. Ever produced. Um, that's only going to be 500 bottles we ever brought to the United States. This is something that was, you know, so unique, so special. Um, we did a single malt tour last year. So I know one of you has tried, tried it when it was 27 years, when it was still a cask sample. Just a baby. Well, Wee baby. We, we let it rest a little bit longer. So this goes right back to the 9th of April, uh, 1992, is whenever this is distilled. And again, this is something that really highlights what Helen does for us at the distillery. Um, so obviously main people we have is Colin Egan, our master distiller, but Helen Mulholland, the master blender. She's been with us for nearly 30 years. The first ever female master blender ever in Irish whiskey history. So she was, she was there whenever this is being distilled. And she has been there the entire time as this is growing up, as this is aged. So she has been there for its entire life. And the reason we Longer than you've bottled it at 28 years is that this is when Helen has decided it is at its absolute best. The care and the quality that Helen provides our casks, she treats them almost like all family members. Uh, we have multiple different warehouses at different levels, different alt altitudes, uh, again, right up in the North Coast. Everyone performs slightly differently. So Helen will choose barrels from one warehouse, one part of a warehouse, um, just to get that perfect uh, balance of quality. So for example, the 10-year, it's her most delicate. It's the one she's the most proud of, but the one that she is just really proud of and was almost sad to see leave uh, whenever I was doing interviews with her last week. And um, she was actually nearly heartbroken the fact that this had to leave because this has been there for as long as her. And the fact that this 
There's only a month uh, from my age as well. So it's going to be a recast whiskey. So it's going to be inside the bourbon barrels to begin with, and then we're going to recast it for a finish inside the cognac casks. And again, we've only got 500 bottles. This is so rare that this is the only bottle I could get. So I, can't, I can't even get the full bottle. And I could see one sitting beside you. Um, but this do, do we want to take a look at it? Very, very special. So again, 17 years inside a cognac cask. And 17 years ago, people didn't use cognac casks, not particularly within Ireland. Um, but it's something that we knew Bushmills was capable of providing new levels of innovation. And the fact that we decided this was ready, and this is why it was bottled back in July. So um, this is my first time cracking it open. Obviously, I By the way, everybody special. out there, while we're, while we're going over this, everybody out there that is actually tasting along with us, quickly write in and tell us what your favorite one you've had here in the Rare Cast series. Love to hear from you on that. I'll throw out a couple of those as well. I I got to tell you, and again, I, this is something we've talked about on the show before. When you're nosing a whiskey or you want to agitate a little bit, you don't want to ram your nose in there. You want to keep your mouth open. You want to get this because the last thing you want to do is ruin what you're going to get on the nose here. So I, right away, there's toffee for me. There's plum notes for me. There's a, like a little biscuity quality on the nose that I, it, it's, and it's all just coming together so beautifully as only, you know, those really special old whiskeys can. And Brad, what are you getting? I actually get like a little more of um, the the orchard fruit, like a little bit of like, um, I don't know the last time you stewed a pear, Dan, but. Uh, you know, I got one stewing right now. Well, then you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I stew them every day. And again, mm. if you just remember, those floral fruity notes, it's our distillate, it's a Bushmills house style. Those honeyed notes, those caramelized notes, that's that bourbon barrel that had been there at the first 11 years. Those darker, more stewed, more plummy, more almost pruny notes, that'll be the hint of the sherry cask. And this level of richness, and it's more of a floral, ripened characteristic. This will be the cognac cask really coming in. So, Ooh, Dan, I see that you, uh, you got your Glencairn there, but for this special occasion whiskey, I actually busted out the Tua, which I, mm. I learned about when I was in Northern Ireland last year. And this is their own special kind of uh, uh, vessel, if you will. If you look at the foot of that bad boy, which is supposed to uh, kind of reflect the irregularities of the Irish coastline, to me, it looks like uh, the Millennium Falcon. I'll be right back. Go ahead, you guys talk amongst <laughs> yourselves. <laughs> yeah, so I see you got one there too, Jack. So, you, yeah, my friend. it's, um, yeah, for a special whiskey, calls a special glass. And again, with this caliber of whiskey, with this age of whiskey, don't judge it now. Just let those complex flavors, because you'll just notice, yeah, we've got certain notes in the nose. Yes, we've got certain notes on the palate, but it is so subtle and so complex, and yet this, it's a powerful subtlety. It's like you'll just notice it'll just grow and grow. Now, how about I'm, in terms I'm of... I'm sorry, the... Brad. Brad, you were, you were saying... Then it again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, about your fancy glass? <laughs> Listen, buddy. Don't ever think you got a glass I don't have. Don't what is ever it called again? What, what is it called again? What's it called? No. Tua. Tua. Um, so uh, what I was going to ask you there for a second, Jack, is when you pour something like this that is this you know, complex, do you recommend letting it actually sit in the glass for a little while if you have the time to wait to maybe let it mingle with oxygen a little bit before you actually take a sip? So, again, th this highlights whiskey's personal, whiskey's different. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Whenever we're dealing with caliber of whiskey, the strength of whiskey, uh, yeah, it is. We only are 46.7%, I believe it is, uh, ABV. It's still easy to go in the palate, but with this caliber of whiskey, typically we tend to find the person ap approaching this, the person purchasing it, uh, the person who's got the opportunity to try it, has probably tried cask strength before. So I think we're okay to go in. But the thing with any cask strength whiskey is that you always need to have water on the side. Always water. That's what's going to be good. And I, typically, I'd always say water on the side. Adding water to your whiskey 
it's personal. Uh, I do know that the Scots would typically say you add in teardrops. You're not going to notice the difference with teardrops. The Scots are tight. They're tight with water. They're tight with distillation. <laughs> they're tight with Logic. everything. Logic. Uh, we would say <laughs> typically about 10% of the volume should be water. But again, it's personal. There's some of our family of whiskies that I would add, definitely add water to because it just softens them. It brings out a longer finish. And then there's others I wouldn't. But I mean, again, this is where whiskey's there. personal. And again, the only way you'd really discover this is by taking your time. The longer you take with it, the more you discover it. And again, this is the beauty of what we said at the start, by using copper pot stills, the most inefficient way to distill. We're getting the highest levels of quality. We're also getting the most intriguing levels of complexity. And the only way to discover and break through complexity is by taking your time. And because Bushmills is not smoked, it is not peated, there's nothing else in there to confuse the palate. We're just getting that pure maltiness. You're getting the best. My palate is not confused. My palate is happy. My palate is very happy right now, Jack. And I got to tell you, so a lot of a lot of our viewers are as well. A bunch of people chiming in. Uh, Mike McGrath said the ten year old was killer. Barbara Adelman said I really like the sixteen year old. She's tasted it at the Bushmills Distillery. Gary uh, Gary Turner loved the Marsala finish. But a close second was the Pedro Jimenez finish. Lorenzo Sanchez loved the 16-year-old. But thinking of stepping up to the 21-year-old, go to Flaviar for that, okay? Mark Latham uh, was 28 last night. I don't know what that means. I'm Did losing he turn 28? Maybe he turned Maybe he 20 turned 28. 20. Happy, hey, Happy Mark, birthday, 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 I guess, birthday. if that happened. Uh, Gary, uh, oh, Kevin Each has said, speaking of rare, he has a bottle of Bush Mills Millennium Malt. Dragon, Kevin. Well, I got Ooh. the Millennium Falcon right here. So yeah, and I cool guess now. what? And you know what? I've got Sandy Koufax's autograph. So do eh, I do. Uh, anyway, impressive. we got to get this. The, the, I can go all night, but we're we are we're we're running here. We're going into the we're going into the six o'clock hour here for me on the West Coast and whatever it is over there in Ireland and it's Jersey close City. To Jersey City is its own Dan country, Dunn. I think. For Jack, so <laughs> all right, we got to we got to pick winners guys for the contest all right gonna make this happen we're gonna do so jack let me ask you do you want to give away the flaviar membership first or you and then then we save the 16 year old for the grand prize what do you want to do uh yeah let, let's save the 16 year old for the grand prize all right so we're gonna give away the flaviar membership the question was the question the the thing was suggestion was send me in a, a, Hall a halloween costume idea so let's we'll go through i'm going to try to pick out quickly some of the better ones here guys you ready let's do it all right uh you should be a bo bottle of bush tony domning says a bottle of bush mills 20 year old i don't know just do a bottle yeah. what the come on you can't suck up like that all right uh eric may says given your resemblance dress as colin farrell from the gentleman all right. Okay. I like that, Eric. He's sucking you. up to you too. Sucking up. Well, <laughs> hey, appeal to my vanity. You're probably going to win. <laughs> There's so many where people are going to dress up like a bottle of Bushmills. No, you're not going to win for that. All right. Um, Eagle Eagle Tack TV says I have a, have a suit that appears front facing on the front and the back. Then don a Trump mask on one side and Biden on the other. It seems a little bit complicated. Uh. Let's see. Cobra Kai Sensei? No. I thought, <laughs> I thought our viewers were going to be more clever than this. Come on. Mike <laughs> McGrath says you should be an Irish Halloween. Bono or Colin Farrell? See? This is it. Mike McGrath understands. He says you should be Bono or Colin Farrell or a combination yeah. of the two. Chris Blade says Hans Gruber from Die Hard. And uh, that's okay. just random enough to win. That is just <laughs> random enough to win. Uh, Heath Tilly says, I should dress up as a tasting vial with a flavor spiral attached to him, and people should guess what whiskey I am. All right, that's pretty clever. Uh, whiskey Barrel, Justin Talent says, I got to go as Bono. Louis or Lewis Anderson says, Dracula, but not any old Dracula. Bram Stoker's Dracula, oh. full Irish representation. You never go full Irish. Never go full Irish, yeah. Um, all right. Professor Jack. Jack. Just Joe 8-It said, 
for crying out loud, go as a copper still. How would you do that? Jack, any suggestions how you go as a copper still? You're not fit through the door. Yeah. You've got to have a very, very round uh, rear end. I have to tell you, I have to tell you a very quick story. I, one year I was living in Aspen, Colorado. I was living in Aspen for five years, but one we're year here, I was in Aspen a very long time ago. Someone. And I decided to go. Halloween was a very big deal in Aspen. And I got this idea that I'm going to go as Cloud Nine. You know the phrase, you're on Cloud Nine? I'm going to be Cloud Nine. So I went out and I, I bought a bunch of pillow stuffing, a bunch of that, and I had white thermal underwear with and i took the pillow stuffing and i glued it all over this and here and some of it was falling off so then i got aqua this is not a joke i got aquanet hairspray and sprayed that on to try to press it down make it stick and still 